everybody. It's Jeremy back with another edition of Abolitionist Abstractions. As always, the Abolitionist Abstractions is covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. And I just realized as I was doing the intro for the second time here, uh, th- that all come out on the Patreon episode. Eventually, you people get to hear that. But uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't do the BIPCOT last week, and uh, I, I should have, but it, it should be known by now. All of my co- content is BIPCOTed. Anyway, so yeah, I'm back. And as I mentioned last week, I was, or, or sorry, two weeks ago now at this point, I was going to start doing more interviews and uh, try to have well, more one on one conversations, rather. I don't want to say interviews. Uh, and I had last week, we had Ryan from the Wasp Report on, and that was great. And this week, I have the second person who reached out to me almost like within minutes of Ryan reaching out to me and saying they wanted to be on the show is uh, a friend and, and former guest on my pod, other podcast, The Seeds of Liberty, and uh, the host of the podcast with probably the coolest intro in the world, uh, my buddy, Mr. Kyle Turnblazer. What's going on, Kyle? Man, I'm listening to you get through that introduction flawlessly. Yeah, it's much better the second time around, right? <laughs> ah, you know, it's, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, actually, uh, you said that because my dad... Uh, my dad, my dad actually uh, listens to of all the other shows I do. My dad's actually listened to a couple of Fiend shows, and uh, with that intro, he was actually he actually asked me if he's like he, he figured out one day that it wasn't a recording. He's like, "Wait a minute, you do that live every show?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, like, you know, gotta be just try to be professional around here, you know." So try to. No, uh, you say it 470 times. You just sound like a robot eventually. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So 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 Kyle, for people who don't know, is uh, is the host of the Liberty Forge, uh, a great podcast, which uh, I highly suggest you check out if you if you don't uh, already subscribe to it. And like I said, I wasn't really being. I mean, it sounded like I was being facetious, but I wasn't. He really does have the coolest fucking intro ever. I am super jealous. Uh, as much as I love the Fiends intro and always have, and like it gets me into gear every time I start a Fiend show and we get rocking and stuff like that. And uh, you know, I get to throw my own little twist on the intro doesn't doesn't compare i love brian sovereign sovereign tech especially when he was doing the uh what was that power man 5000 song he was using recently again the the, the whole thing about the man in black but uh yeah so uh it, that's really cool one still doesn't compare your, <laughs> your, your intro well, thanks man I every time i hear it, it every time i hear it because it just i'm like i'm like this is awesome and i want to kill him at the same time for having a better intro than me <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to give I've got to give some of the credit to Jerry James, man. Uh, the guy that does the voiceover on it, incredible professional voice, really is. Yes, Jerry's uh, Jerry's Jerry's a great guy. I know I've I've heard him on the uh, up until now pod faded. I know he hates when I use that word, but the still until this point still pod faded radical logic podcast. Um, <laughs> I've heard him interviewed there. Did you did you have Jerry on? I, I, I can't. I'm trying to remember now on your show. Did you interview Jerry? Yeah, on? yeah, yeah I, you did. I, okay, I, did. I thought so. I did on number sixteen. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. And uh, yeah, he's yeah he's a great guy and uh, big big fan of his voice and uh, what he can do. But he he definitely made a, a killer intro there for you. So yeah, and he takes and he takes crypto for payment. This so is true. I don't think it. I don't think it could have worked out any better. That's really awesome, and I do believe Jeremy that he's come over to the dark side. Is he? Fi- is he finally? Yes. He. I, I remember when I first. He's a, he he's wasn't an anarchist. It. Yet. Yeah. He is. Ah, uh, he's finally. He's finally one of us. We finally convinced when, them. When I. <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> no. When when I had him on my show, uh, episode number sixteen, the one directly after the one that I had you on, he. Uh, I said, "Hey, man, I, I I just did this show with Jeremy. He went through a bunch of shit." And I think it's cool how he's moving away from it. But I really want to touch on that whole walking to freedom concept. And I know you did that when you moved to Alaska. And you've been in radio for a long time. you got a really cool voice. And, you know, you did some work for me. And I really appreciate it. Why don't you come on the show? And we can talk about that. And, you know, like Jerry did, he said, yeah, man, <laughs> that'd be groovy. I said, all right, yeah, 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 let's do it. And, uh. I called him on Skype. I was like, you ready to do this? He's like, yeah, man, I'm uh, way up there. I was like, Jerry, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm so stoned, man. Let's do it. I said, all right, fuck, right, fuck it. Let's do it, man. It's a podcast. This ain't radio. We can do whatever you want. 
And uh, yeah, we did. And we, we chatted for about an hour and a half. And at the end of it, he's like, you know, maybe I'm high. And maybe, you know, I just didn't want you fuckers to beat it out of me. But yeah, sure. I'm on your team. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Finally, yeah, we won one. That's a, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I'll put I'll put some links here in, in in the show notes for this show to link to that episode um, and my episode with you since you were so nice to mention that too. Uh, <laughs> um, but also, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll try to link to the the first time he was on Radical Logic with Merrick and Jonathan, uh, because you'll be able to yeah. hear the difference between when you first meet Jerry. Oh yeah, and what like a year later now, I guess maybe a little more than a year since yeah. they did that episode with him. Uh, maybe you know. Well, one year, year cannot understand without context, Jeremy. What's that? I said one cannot exactly. understand without context. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put both of those in there. But that's really great because, like I said, I mean, I mean, obviously we're 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 cheering for uh, for for stealing another status the way. But he's uh, over even even without that. <laughs> even when he still even when he was still a fully admitted minarchist, uh, he's still a really great guy and uh, really really great oh, talent yeah. too. If you need voiceover work, I mean, I say that. And uh, you know, Jerry takes crypto, which is great. I do too, by the way. Anybody listening out there, I have done voiceover work, I, and I've gotten paid in crypto myself. I got. I I did well, allegedly. Um, I did work for Liberty Lampoon, <laughs> and uh, I'm quite willing to do uh, recording work for anybody else. And I do uh, take crypto, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, if you really need that, what Lou calls, "Hey, let me show you my scars," voice, then Jeremy's your guy. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah I, I I could do certain things if you if you need the straight up radio voice that can do that has that kind of range. Well, then, yeah, ra- I I'm not quite there yet. I, I mean I do radio, but Jerry Jerry has that that proto like that prototypical radio voice. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, he nails it, man. So anyway, enough enough adulation for a guy who's not even here at the moment. Let's get back to let's get back to you and me since we're the ones talking here. So anyway, you you reached out to me. Uh, it was it was funny. You were I mean you like, like I said I got I got a message on Twitter from Ryan like shortly after i posted the video and you too like shortly after like you were like you know i was like already i'm getting responses mm-hmm. this is pretty crazy this is this usually doesn't happen but you were like yeah let's do it what you want you on guest when, when can we do it so we lined it up oh, for yeah. tonight and when we were talking earlier i we were we were kicking around some ideas and you had mentioned uh, a topic that's been uh i guess uh been on your mind a bunch which involves, among other things, the the wonderful book, which I to this day still have not read. Uh, shame on me, Dale Carnegie's "How to Win Friends and Inf- uh, How to What Is It? How to Win Friends and Influence People." That's that's the actual title. Yeah, you um, nailed it, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, and and stuff surrounding that and the, and the lack of communication in uh, in our in our in our in our small communities. So uh, yeah, why don't you uh, why don't you tell me what you've been thinking, man? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure it's been in more than one conversation that you've had where people just either defend something till the bitter death because, well, I guess I got to be consistent, you know, even if I'm, yeah, could be proven wrong, but yeah, this is, this is the way I see it. And it's 100% objectively true. And there's, it's not just in our little community, man. It's everywhere. Yeah. I see it in my, I see it in my own family. I mean, I, I see it with people and it drives me absolutely crazy. Like, hey, it's like, I'm not trying to win an argument. Like, I, I'm trying to learn something from you. Like, I'm genuinely interested in what you're talking about and, you know, why you feel that way. And maybe you can show me why this is another perspective to consider. <clears throat> I think the best case that I can think of is my very limited couple interactions that I've had with Jared Howe on Facebook. Oh, those are always fun. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it's a blast. Yeah. yeah. Absolute blast. I mean, I hear, I see a bunch of people talking shit about him, and I'm like, well, you know, he's had his journey. It looked like he was learning lots of good stuff, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, it's not that I'm picking on the guy. It's a perfect example, though. Like, all, all of a sudden, it's just a complete 180 and it's like he he shut down and wouldn't let anybody like have an a genuine conversation with him yeah 
Well, we actually, uh, I was telling you this before the show, and, but that's why I said this this topic was actually it was actually a good one to, to cover, especially because last week we kind of started to touch on this a little bit about just about people's ability to communicate or not even necessarily ability, but we were talking more about the desire to communicate. But when, when you were bringing this idea to me earlier, uh, it seemed to be a combination of both desire and the ability because people just seem not capable. And, and, and last week's show with Ryan, we we talked about that. Like I said, we, we touched on it a little bit and we went over kind of how people just shut, like they don't, let's see, how did I put it? They, uh, you know, they're, oh, it was, it was, it was more tied to like the ideologies people choose and like, you know, uh, po- uh, identity politics and stuff like that. When people, you know, cling to these ideologies and, and it becomes them, they just, they really, they think they found the answer and they don't need to learn anything else. Like they, right. they have shut your mind up. And that actually does tie in, I think really well to what you're saying about, and again, you know, not, not to pick on the guy, although I've done it plenty of times in the past, but he's taken more than enough shots at me. So it's quite all right. Uh, but, uh, oh, sure. yeah. but, but, it, but it is a great example of somebody who, you know, had, had a certain way of thinking. Like when I first, you know, when I first met Jared, he was just start, like, he had just started out in the rap, the rap game, I guess, whatever he was doing with that. Uh, That's like, what si- we called it in 98. Yeah. Well, like six months earlier and he, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, obviously I, I, I date myself with a lot of the, a lot of the terminology I use, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, and he was, uh, he, he was, uh, really in, until intelligent and articulate guy. And he was, uh, you know, he was talking about ANCAP stuff and, and all these things. And like, we, we, you know, we got along with, with the Seeds of Liberty to the point that he kind of became our fourth, co- like we joked about him being the fourth, the fourth band member at the Seeds of Liberty because he filled in for a Danilo yeah. a bunch and then we had him on a bunch and, and then, you know, like you said, he, whatever happened with him, whatever dis- decision that, whatever changed for him that he decided to take a different, ta- different, you know, use different tactics and have these different ideas that, you know, suppo- supposedly his principles haven't changed, but they don't really seem what he, what he uh, spouts off to, about today doesn't seem to line up about what he was talking about back then. So I don't know how that works out. But it, I think it's a good example of somebody who now has become so wedded to the current ideology that they, that they are, you know, that they're identifying with that there's no other, there's no other answer. They have all the right answers and anybody who disagrees with them either has to be a complete idiot or lying. And they can just dismiss you out of hand by asking a, by asking a, ve- a very pointed and very you know a, a question that a very loaded uh, not sorry pointed well pointed was the wrong uh, term a load a very loaded question to try to be like aha see you're you're just a, you're just a stupid commie I don't need to bother with you block or whatever it is you know and I think uh, you know it's obviously it's not just him so many people do that and I refer to it i referred to it last week and i've referred to it plenty of times before you know as residual statism but it's the same kind of thing like it 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 baffles it really baffles my mind when it comes from people especially in the ancap community who i was a member of for quite a while and i always viewed as the people who had the best understanding of logic and reason that's kind of why they got to the place that they got to because they were able to look at things logically and be able to dissect why things were you know why things were the way they were and type of thing but but unfortunately too many people get there and go oh now we have all the answers i need to st- i need i can stop learning now it's like no that's not how this works man well yeah i mean that's that's not how that works. I mean, if if you're learning for the sake of becoming a better individual, which kind of goes hand in hand with this whole freedom thing, then you don't get closed off. You don't pick a team. You don't follow a leader. You stand on your principles and you learn as much as you possibly can. And in that learning, you gain an education and you better yourself. Yeah, but you should learn how to better communicate with other people, how to uh, work better with other people, and how to build mutually beneficial relationships. That never does happen when you say, Stefan Molyneux's got it figured out, and I'm going to defend him until my dick's in the dirt. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's funny for multiple reasons. Cause again, it's, it's it, you bring that up and I immediately think of myself cause I was one of those people <laughs> back, right. way, way back when I, I was a huge, huge defender of, of Molyneux and it was a, it was a, bl- it was a blind defense 
because I wasn't really hearing the criticisms that people were levying at 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 him uh, or or me for for reiterating or or regurgitating this you know more is probably more accurate uh, just regurgitating the yeah. same things that he said uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to the criticism. I wasn't listening to the arguments. I was just automatically shutting everything down with my own for my own form of buzzwords that, you know, that the, the, uh, the free domain radio community has like, you know, not an argument that, that gets thrown right. out so many times that like now there's a whole bunch of us that have a whole bunch of memes making fun of that, which is great. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I have my one that I got to roll out again today. Still, it's one of the cra- like just cheesiest memes I threw together in like two seconds, but it makes me, it still makes me laugh every time I put it out there. It's the one with his face where he's all pissed off and it says, do you think arguments are a motherfucking game? And I just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I throw it out there usually whenever I see somebody like making fun of Molyneux and, and, the, and the not a argument thing uh. or if somebody throws not an argument at me, that's what I usually throw back at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that's a good one, man. But it's this, and, and, and I mean, and re- oh, I was just gonna say, regardless of in certain situations, they're correct that it's not actually an argument if the person is actually attempting yeah. to make an argument and they're making a bad one. Re- regardless yeah. of the fact that that is what that is become that phrase has become. It's just a buzzword meant to shut down a conversation and just shut the other person up so you can so you can walk around like the pigeon on the fucking chessboard yeah i'm right ha ha well are you i mean really are you i don't know that that was another thing we got brought up last week is that i i I admitted on the show i think multiple times that uh the reason the reason i my my views and my positions continue to evolve and why i've pissed off so many people over the past year or so because i either haven't followed down a particular path with them or i've done i've i've apparently changed according to them is the fact that i've i've fully embraced the fact that i don't know a goddamn fucking thing (laughs) <laughs> i have i have finally which as as ryan was so nice to point out that was uh was it socrates or aristotle who said that you know the beginning of knowledge the, the beginning of wisdom is is uh admitting you don't know anything it was one of the two of them and i don't remember i always forget which one it was but he's like see look at that I'm like, i don't i don't want to sound like an idiot but i th- yeah i don't I, I don't want to sound uninformed or get this wrong but it was it was either one of those or maybe plato Possibly, I don't. I it was definitely one of the 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 greats. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he mentioned on last week's show. I don't. I don't remember. But anyway, but that's. But you know, he was nice enough to point that out, and I'm like, I wasn't even thinking of those terms. But I guess that's right. That you know, that's kind of. I've always, ever since I heard that quote the first time, I always thought it was pretty accurate. And I, I think I finally reached that point, and that's why I'm willing to. Uh, have you know not only I'm looking to have more conversations just in general but that's why I try to start doing on this show and I know you and I happen to agree on a lot of things but I'm you know I'm trying to have more conversations with people I don't agree with but that's kind of what we're talking about here about the fact that how difficult it is to have these conversations with people I mean that's why I was very happy that that Ryan was willing to come on last week because he's a he's a self I I, I don't think I told you much about him I don't don't know if you got to listen to that one yet but he's a he's a self-professed he's a self-professed anarcho anarcho he's an anarcho he's an anarcho capitalist but he's also a Trump supporting alt writer and he claims all three of those titles okay. and, and defends them jealously, as he put it. So we obviously, him and I obviously disagree on a lot of positions. And we didn't get to all, we didn't get yeah. to a bunch of them. But it's just the idea of like, you know, finally I was able to have a conversation with somebody who does, I'm assuming, vehemently disagree with me on certain positions, but mm. is at least willing to talk to me about it instead of just shutting down the conversation with some buzzword or just trying to bury me in word salads and you know trying to uh or you know or whatever other fallacy they want to throw out at me that type of thing yeah word salads disgusting man i hate that shit i've i've actually seen a lot of people or heard a lot of people that that claim that anarcho-capitalism and being right wing and being politically right wing like the donald trump supporters that that wear the black and yellow or do whatever the hell they do um, I've I've heard people claim that they don't contradict, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't been able to have a conversation to where I can learn the logic behind that statement. Because when I try to talk to someone, like, hey, um, I don't think those go together, but I'd love to talk to you and see, you know, maybe I could learn something. 
oh, well, you're just not woke. <laughs> <laughs> or some dumb shit like that. Like, oh, okay, not going to talk to you assholes. I guess it's a fad and it shouldn't be taken seriously. And immediately, I regret having that response. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Well, if, if that's the conversation, if, if you're looking to have at that, any point that particular conversation, my, my guest from last week would actually probably be a good person for you to talk to. Like I said, he's, 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 cool, he's right a cool on. guy. He does his own podcast called The Wasp Report. I'll give you his information. You may want to uh, reach out to him on Twitter because uh, he's not on Facebook nice. anymore. So you, you got to get on t- get in touch with him through there. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, or I could I could hook you up. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe. I he, mean, that's, he, that's he probably not really be, what I do. Well, that's not really what I do on my show, but but yeah, I I, I love having those conversations like on Facebook, and I, I really need to be on Twitter more, but I'm I'm just not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you want to have that particular conversation, I got the guy for you. But I know what you're saying in general. Nice, it's it's nice. it's not even that you know any yeah. pick any idea, pick any ideology, pick any position. Uh, when you ha- when you're dealing with the people the who who hold on to that ideology the strongest, and whether they are straight up extremists or fundamentalists or whatever, you know, however wacky they are about their ideology, or even just the ones who act uh, outwardly normal, but still cling to it so, so vigorously that they're not willing to even, even uh, consider another position. You know, I always get brought right. back to the, the, the other, one of those other old guy quotes. I think this, I think that think this, this one's the Aristotle one, the, uh, you know, the mark of an educated mind is one that can entertain an idea without accepting it so many people that that's a lot that concepts lost on and i i don't know i mean for me i i see it as as a combination of the ever increasing twitter and meme world that we live in you know i referred to it last week as the twitter and meme generation but i i mean everybody who's living now not necessarily one particular generation because it's anybody who has like you know, I, I think i said this last week anybody who has access to these uh access to these things yeah uh, you know, the, these platforms, that's exactly what it is. And everybody's attention spans continue to diminish. And that fits right in line with the Prussian model of schooling that has been, you know, that's been yep. around here since the 1840s or 50s or whenever Horace Mann came over here. It's like, hey, I learned some great crap when yeah. I was over in Germany. You guys should check this out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, that's what I was going to say. I don't, I don't think it just kicked off whenever people started making memes on Facebook, it it may have, people may have had more access to it, but closed minded interactions with other human beings has been going on since, you know, forever, man, I'd, I'd say, you know, just like social media may have boosted it as much as it did for the world, the printing press probably boosted it. I mean, you've seen political ads from, you know, 100, 150 years ago, and they were slamming each other. You oh, know, yeah. the candidates that were that, that, that were campaigning or whatever. I mean, it was stuff like accusing another candidate of incest and all this other stuff. Oh, and adultery and like everything else. And yeah, oh, yeah. They, oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first, I think, uh, I think the first time I remember seeing that was when I, when I was first getting back into history in my, in like my constitutionalist days, uh, you know, right before I stumbled into the tea party for a minute. And I, I remember, I remember read, I don't even remember where I came across it, but I was just reading a whole bunch of stuff and like looking all over the internet. And I just stumbled across these ads and it was right around the time that I guess it must've been the, yeah, but it was, it was, it was Obama's second election then. So yeah, so it was around, it was around that election. So the 2012 election, then everybody was complete, you know, it was, there was a lot of stories out there. Oh, it's so horrible. And the same thing in a lot of the Senate races. Oh, it's so horrible. The way these people talk about each other and they spend the money. The mud on these, like, Jesus. like it's, it's, this isn't the way things were done. This isn't what the forefathers wanted. It's like, and then I came across that and I just remember posting these things in so many different groups. Oh, it groups was so was, much worse. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> it, it wasn't like that. Wait, wait a minute. You, you don't think these guys these guys were even worse look at the crap they were saying <laughs> i'm like oh, yeah. these these, yeah. Mo- these motherfuckers are actually tame because they have to deal with their own monster the fcc they can't they wouldn't be able to get away with the shit that the the four the our, our, our quote-unquote forefathers were able to get away with way back then yeah. <laughs> but i agree with you i think i think since the uh 
since the uh, you know the invention of the printing press, it's definitely become more exacerbated. But it's been sped up so much by the internet, and then then the you know the internet was was another huge step, and then social media yeah. was just it was even. I mean, it, you just remember back to when the internet first kicked off in what ninety four ninety five, you know, way back then on the AOL days, you know, dial up modems. Yeah, yeah. And stuff when it like was that. when it was easier than just getting on a message board. Yeah. Yeah, like I like I remember back of those days, and like, and that was that was you know that was that was. Worse worlds ahead of where we had been and now only what 20 years later 22 years later 23 years later now like we're millions of light years ahead of that like the increase has just been insane in the you know it's been uh, exponential in the last two decades it's Moore's law man well yeah so now it's so now it's even more prevalent and i i think it definitely i i don't know i think it's I think it's had more of an impact, unfortunately, than the printing press did. You know, even if you try to compare, like the impact it had at the time and to, to the impact it had, I don't. I think the printing press may have had a more of a positive impact <laughs> than social yeah. media has well, actually had. But I, I think I think social media, unfortunately, has had a, a bigger impact on people's lives. I don't know. What do you think? You want to hear this crazy theory that I've got? Go for it. Things like social media and technological advancement that comes along in a time where we're getting more and more and more entitlements from the state and it's incentivizing more and more and more people that are physically lazy, intellectually lazy and spiritually lazy. And they think that, I mean, they're just free to say whatever the fuck they want to without consequences. I think that whole soup is what cooks these people who will wall off and say, no, uh, I heard that on the Fox news, son, and you ain't right. You want to fight about it? I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> uh, I mean, those are my neighbors. I think that's pretty accurate representation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, it is, you know, you don't have to think the TV does it for you. You don't have to work. Your neighbor does it for you. And your, your government steals enough money from him so you can buy your, you know, Twinkies and monster drinks. I mean, no one is incentivized to do anything that even looks like education or growing, not financially, but, but wealthy in all forms of capital, like social and, and, and the rest of them. There's no incentives for that. And you know, me and you talking together on one podcast, who we're going to blame, it's the state. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, usually behind, they're usually behind a lot of the problems. I think it takes a special individualist type character to look at all of it and say, no, you know, I, I don't think any of this is right, but I do want to understand my environment so I can better work in, around, or through it. And that's when you start wanting to learn. You want to, you start wanting to have genuine conversations with people like, Hey, um, what do you think so great about communism? Why do you want all my paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you can either learn what their goals are and say, Oh, you're really cool. You know, we've, we've come to be friends. W would you like to learn why the path to obtaining your goals, which, which are similar to mine, don't get me wrong, like in games the same, but you're going to murder a lot of people on the way. Let's not do that. You want to listen and see if my idea is better? That's a cool idea, huh? But that just, that doesn't come natural to anyone who doesn't take their education, their success, and their own life as their own responsibility. The states made us irresponsible. And in making us irresponsible, they've made us lazy. Like I said, physically, spiritually, and intellectually, especially. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think, yeah, the, the intellectual one is definitely, uh, I think, that the biggest, the biggest one to overcome, unfortunately, because you're referring to the people that you know, you're referring to the lack of incentive. And, you know, there, there is that ability to have that lack of incentive. I mean, not everybody takes advantage of the, of those situations that you're talking about, although in other countries, they definitely do. Um, and they're more so are doing it around yeah. here too, but you know, there are, there are still, there are still natural incentives out there that certain people strive for. But I think the, the education thing is, is the big problem because 
even of the uh, of the po- if you take the seg- segment of the population that is going after like the you know is, is focused on the whether they realize it or not that the natural incentives and they're not going for the all the state you know the state hand you know, the state for, you know, formulated incentives uh yeah the majority the even even the majority of those people are still stuck in that that horrible education loop because they have been convinced that they already received one so there's no need for a further one which is why they won't you know which is why most of them have no interest in trying to grow any further they think that gaining monetary wealth and gaining and or you know gaining the gaining the you know the monetary capital rather and or the uh what you call the social capital those two like one uh, either one or both um is good enough they don't got to worry about anything else right. and when those are the only two out of all you know out of all the other ones you could possibly be focused on then chances are it's good it's going to be a bad time usually for a lot of other people too <laughs> a lot of other people are going to get hurt because of your horrible decisions um you know oh yeah, yeah. especially when you can and when, when you can you... vote for when you can vote and and make it bad for a whole fucking lot of people at the same time <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And when you choose to follow a bad actor in the market instead of dealing with natural occurring market forces, there's a lot of people that's going to have a bad day. Now, you you can apply that to politics. You can apply that to relationships. You can apply that to your career. You can apply that to pretty much anything. You know, there's an economy in a lot of different areas in our life. You know, Ludwig von Mises' human action and the study of praxeology in general, you know, economics isn't, you know, bull markets and bear markets and, oh, we got to spend our way out of this slump. It's human action. It's the way humans act in a situation. We call that situation an economy, really. I mean, I have an economy in my friends. Here lately, I haven't been acting in it because I'm in a truck. (laughs) <laughs> not only am I doing my job, I'm not talking to them because I'm talking to lovely people like Jeremy and Michael Dean Superfine and all these other guys. Like, I'm focused on me. Like, this is where I'm putting my action. So my social capital, imagine that, has gone up pretty high. I mean, you know, two years ago, I was just some dumb guy driving a truck to coal mines really i worked with explosives and i'm like hey i get paid by the hour this is awesome <laughs> and uh Yeehaw. yeah yeah no now i'm talking to the guy who built you know and 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 i should probably i should probably premise this uh i did an interview earlier with uh with michael dean of the freedom fiends and that's just what i'm capable of doing now like oh yeah that guy that does that fm radio show that goes all over the place whatever and has been doing it for years and years. Yeah, I'm, I'm at that level now. Because, I mean, that's what social capital is. That's what happens when you get an education. You invest in yourself. You bust your ass. You don't follow the bad actor in the market. And you kind of set yourself up to either, you know, work through, in, or around those market forces. So, uh, yeah, great point. I, 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 th- I mean, it's it's funny you mentioned that because uh, you know that that goes along with something we were we were talking about the on the seeds of liberty recently about our our, our whole issue. We didn't put it in the terms of social capital, but we had uh, you know we were discuss we were discussing our, our wrongdoings. We were basically coming clean with our first episode of 2018 and about how you know we had kind of kind of put in a lackluster effort in the second half of the year and we we were having we were we were we saw some a decline in numbers and we talked about it openly you know a lot of it has to do with our a lot of our social we we burned a lot of our social capital whatever we had built because of <laughs> uh, of the rift in the well, actually it, it it actually comes down to a, a problem of communication which is what we've been talking about here uh, essentially tonight and the the fact that people have split into camps even within the you know the liberty community or even within the anarchists and even with people who had been 
in the same camp just last year, all of a sudden it's split again and you see those same patterns where everybody's in their echo chambers. And because of that, uh, you know, a bunch of people that don't agree with me uh, have turned against me and a bunch of people who don't agree with my co-host have turned against them. And because we still work together, that has affected us. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. but it, but it, but it comes back to people being unwilling to have conversations, and people just be, wanting to have be so rigid in their positions, and think they have all the answers, and think they don't have to have them, uh, or think they don't, they don't have, they don't even have to have the conversations. Rather, because they have all the answers, that it's you know a conversation for them exi- it, it involves. Uh, okay, this is what I think. What do you think? Oh, no, this is where you're wrong. Do you see why you're wrong? Oh, no, you can't. Then you must be an idiot. You must be a commie. You must be this. You must be that. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you think it's because these intellectually lazy people um, just have no ambition to better themselves, to build more of their own individual freedom? They just don't bother with building relationships and, and learning you know, different perspectives. I uh, I don't I don't know. I think it depends. I mean, because certain people, like the one we mentioned earlier, um, and people like that who have gotten a, a certain amount of of social capital, you know, within within our community, and uh, gotten themselves to certain places, or other ones who may have made who may may have made money one way or another because of it. I think they're still flying high, and. They 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 may have convinced themselves that they're still they're still doing all these other things that they're actually you know that they're actually basically living it <laughs> uh, when they're and, or they're or they're or they're or, or they're still you know they're they're still open and they're still you know they're still willing to learn but what they're you know they're really just they're very, they become very closed minded again and. I mentioned it earlier the ter- you know that term residual statism I mean for me that's like the best definition of it cuz it just it just keeps coming back to that cuz it's like you know you see it in everybody but it just it always baffles me when you see it in the anarchist communities people who are supposed to have a better understanding of logic and I I don't know I mean the intellectual laziness is I, I don't I don't really know why it occurs I think it's just a lot of people, at least a lot of the ones I've come across, I or, and even even my former self, I guess, before I kind of snapped myself out of some of this stuff a couple of years back, though a lot of people came to these ideas because, unfortunately, uh, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I guess, or depending on the day, maybe you a lot of a lot of people came to these ideas because they were outcasts from society. Uh, in, a, in a bunch of in you know in a bunch of different ways for whatever you know because they they didn't fit in because they didn't think like everybody else to a certain extent you know and when you when you come from that and then all of a sudden you find more people like you and people who share these ideas it's it's very easy to become complacent because you now feel yeah. like you fa- oh this is what's been wrong this entire time i've now i've now found my home and everything's groovy you know yeah i've found my collectivist home yeah i don't have to think anymore exactly and it's like wait a minute yeah. didn't you get here by by not by doing the opposite of that like you you know it's <laughs> I mean, like I said, I get it because I went through it. I I did it, you know. I I jumped I jumped over the fence as I refer to it as, and once I did, I I became very, very rigid and very preachy, and very angry, and yeah, I wasn't really willing to hear. All I wanted to do was explain to people why they were wrong. You know, I wasn't having conversations with people. I was talking at people, and yep. You know, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I used to, for for year for years after that, I would say, well, it's their loss. Like, they didn't, you know, I'm still right. So it's like, not like, you know, not like I did anything wrong. They'll figure it out one day type of thing, you know, but over the past yeah, year Yeah, but so, what, what do you actually win when you do that? Well, exactly. I, I lost, you know, I, I shrunk the number of people I know. And in some cases, it was good. Other cases, maybe not so much. Uh, and, and, and even others, I, it'll be, you know, it's too early to tell still. You know, maybe I'll maybe I'll have really shot myself in the foot, but that's why I've you know over the past year or so I've kind of taken a step back and I've I've started exploring other ideas again and I've kind of come like I mentioned earlier I came to that realization of you know just not knowing shit man so 
that's why I'm willing to have conversations, especially with people who have differing opinions. But it, it's hard to find that. It's hard to find that in people, you know, like we've been talking about because so many people are closed off. But, you know, the one thing we mentioned at the very beginning of the show, I think we, I think I did bring it up. Yeah, the book. Uh, we never even got there, um, which is the whole, the whole reason you wanted to talk about this. How, how, does, how, well, did, I mean, how does that book the, the, that I have admittedly and ashamedly never read, how, how does that fit into the, the lack, what's lacking in people's ability to have conversations these, these days? Basically, the thing that I take away from it that's relevant to our conversation is people want their accomplishments recognized just like you and I do. People want to express their emotions just like you and I do. It reminds us that you should be weary of logic when you're trying to convince a human being because human beings are not logical creatures. They're emotional creatures. That took me a long time to figure out, but it's true. Yeah, only us only us Aspies are uh, logical creatures by uh, default, <laughs> right? No, I mean for me, I mean I mean relevant to the conversation here for me, it was just you know these people think emotionally just like just like you think emotionally, like like they're excited about what they think is the right course. They're excited about what they think is bringing value in in their lives. When you discredit that. You know, it it makes you come off as if you don't think they're valuable, like you're insulting their intelligence, which you, you may or may not think that they have any intelligence, but they sure as hell do. And you're insulting that you're, you're insulting their way of life. You're you're insulting everything that makes them them. I, I mean, honestly, almost on a spiritual level and. You know, you're not going to win any friends or influence anybody by doing that. When you seek to understand instead of seek to, you know, react, then you start building relationships. And you can't build relationships without building value. And as far as it as far as it goes with social capital, I mean, that's that's something that we self proclaimed capitalists should be pretty good at. Like I said earlier, I mean, there's a market in everything. You just flip it around and apply it to relationships. And there's a lot in this book that helps you do that. I'm loving it. I haven't actually, I'll admit, I haven't actually read it from beginning to end. I have done a lot of summaries and cliff notes type stuff on audio. That's how I consume all my books is on audio. And every everybody's insight on it, everybody's summary of it that I could get a hold of pretty much says the same thing. And it would, I mean, just even those summaries, man, it would do someone wonders to just get it on Audible. It's like four bucks. Um, the full book is like 30. And I mean, just, just go through it as many times as you want to see what, for me, when I, when I go through it again, I, I, I kind of see if there's anything like, okay, this week or this month or anytime soon, do I have any kind of instance where I've absolutely done that? Like, like in my relationships, in the people I talk to, have I built value? Have I, you know, confirmed that, hey, you know, what, what your theories are, what, what your, uh, what your intelligence seems to indicate, I guess you'd say. You know, you've got something there and it, it, it's got nice little, um, there's nice little hints in there. Like don't use the word, but instead use the word and like if I'd say, Hey man, that's a great theory, but I think you could do a little better by doing this. Or I say, Hey man, that's a great theory. And I think if you took it a little further and opened your mind to two or three more possibilities, you see how that sounds a little bit more positive, like little tips and tricks like that. And I really do think it was written for salesmen, man, honestly, because when I was in sales and religiously learning, dedicated to memory, 10 steps to the sale, this process, that system, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of that in that with building rapport and making sure you understand through a needs assessment and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. 
because uh, like I said, I've I, ha- I I haven't read the book, but I that that one I do I do remember learning way back when, and basically for the same reasons to uh, to apply it to a, to a sales idea, you know, this this a sales job. So yeah, I could I could totally see how that would uh, why, why you would why you would come away thinking that it was designed almost as it, as if it was specifically designed for salespeople. But yeah, it, it does. You know, so many. And and again, bringing it back to what we were talking about earlier with the the effect social media, especially you know the internet is one thing, but social media even more so. The effect that has on people because it, it gives the ability for people to to interact, but at such a disconnected level that they don't ha- they don't ha- they don't have to explore. It's just so because it's so easy to just just like Facebook has essentially co opted the word friend. You know they oh, have yeah. they have also effectively made it possible for it well for well not sorry it didn't make it possible because it was, was able to do it on other platforms beforehand but kind of like made it even more fashionable to like to essentially delete people from their lives by like unfriending and blocking yeah. you know and not only that go to the other side of the coin they have they have super incentivized people to go for instant gratification immediately like 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 share like like oh yeah it's and it's and it's nothing productive it's like hey hey look look at this tart over here he's totally wrong like this post please well that's the the dopamine hit that uh it is yeah there's uh i, I can't remember uh what show we did this on but we were talking about this actually might have been the the seeds episode we do with merrick but we were talking about, I, I mentioned there was a you know there's been f- multiple facebook executives or former executives and former people who wor- people you know programmers and stuff that work there who have been coming out over the past couple of years and all making similar statements to the effect that they actually now feel bad about what they've done because that's basically what they did they they helped create this feedback loop of dope of mini dopamine hits for people yeah. all day long i've heard that on three or four different shows man yeah yeah, yeah that's that shit's real yeah, and that's that. You're right. That's exactly what's happened, and you know, it's it really does, and it's so because again, it's so easy for people to feel to to easily disconnect from people they don't want to associate with, but feel yeah. super connected to the ones to the people within their little echo chambers, <laughs> and the ones they prefer yeah. to talk to, and that's how they get their adulation from these people, and it's it's replaced actually providing value as you're you know as you've been referring to like actually like you know whether it's being there to help out with something when somebody needs a hand or offering to do something for somebody or even just talking to somebody or like whatever or just like finding some way to provide any you know value or whether you're you know from a capitalist perspective whether you're providing them with a good or service that you're providing about like all these like whatever it is like that is that type of that that type of adulation has replaced the uh the actually provi- uh, providing value for most people which is why it seems yeah. to, which i i would i i think is why it's so low on the totem pole especially now especially now these days as far as like people's yeah, priorities yeah it's instant it's absolutely instant i mean nobody nobody god this is the only way i can think to put this right now in this moment nobody hodls gratification <laughs> the gains are so much bigger when you hodl gratification <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's and I, I, I don't know, Jeremy. Maybe if they were real men like you and I, they'd get their dopamine hits off Poloniex. I don't know. Yeah. Well, not me. Me and, me and Poloniex have some issues, but you know. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. I'm a I'm a yeah. I'm a cryptopia man, man. Uh, I don't I don't like that verification stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I get it, man. But but yeah, I mean, you know, jokes aside, I I, I think that's true. Like. People in general have forgotten in the days of 0% interest rates propped up by the fucking state, people have forgotten what delayed gratification is. And it's, I, I really do believe it's hurt our relationships in doing so. Just I, I say we because I know you love it so much, but, but I mean it like everybody. I think uh, I think that's true. It's, it's funny you mentioned that the, the the delayed gratification thing because you know that's something I struggle with my kids with a lot, uh, and it you know I I always bring back every time the conversation comes up between Jen and I, I always end up mentioning the marshmallow test. 
you know, the whole idea of yeah. that, the te- you know, teaching kids, trying to figure out when they can actually, w- when they've actually underst- understood that concept, you know, basically, for anybody who doesn't know, basically, you know, you offer the kid a marshmallow or, or whatever you're using, but they call it the marshmallow test because I guess the original test was done with marshmallows and, you know, say, hey, we'll give you this marshmallow. Oh, yeah. Oh, great, great, great. But... They bring it, and then you bring out more marshmallows. If you can wait like uh-huh. a minute or whatever it is, then you'll get two marshmallows type of the, you know, like and you know, it dep- yeah. you know, depending on the age and the and the uh, perception about the perceptive abilities of the kid, they'll like you know, some kids can't you know can't do it, and most adult even kid most kids will figure it out. Unfortunately, because of things like the you know the soul sucking Prussian school model that most people have been have been have been. Uh, grinded through and then hashtag me too exactly and <laughs> oh man oh we're going to hell for that bit they uh <laughs> and then uh between the combination of that and then the ever present you know gentle gentle nudge of the state to keep people at war with each other by you know the dis- divisive tactics which are ever present that's not a conspiracy theory it's but you know just look back through history you know it's just the way politics go they, it's that's pretty evident they, you yeah. know they play out they play off people's and politicians have always played off people's emotions and that's what they do and they and they keep people just agitated enough with each other that they keep their focus on them and maybe every once in a while come to blows, but not quite enough that they're literally going to war with each other. Cause then they're obviously both sides are useless to those, those same politicians. Well, then they're not useful anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but so, so a combination of the schooling and that, and then just culture in general, cause I mean, politicians do do that, but another thing that's been said a bunch and you know, it's, it's a phrase that I, I do, I do actually agree with uh, that. You know, I think politics really is, downstream of culture uh, i think a lot more times than it yeah. necessarily being this evil you know centuries long plan <laughs> this this evil plot it's just more so politicians are able to take advantage of this because this is now the culture we live in you know because with the ever dwind- yeah. with that with the ever dwindling attention spans and the combination of where people's minds were before the attention span the spans continue to decrease because you know Way back, way back in the days before all this stuff, before all the technology helped us, you know, because again, that that's another thing. That wasn't the government; it was technology that helped us. They helped us get here, uh, get us a lot of the way You're here, right. you know. Between you know, between the invention of the cell phone, uh, you know, I mean, computers obviously, but the, then the cell phone and stuff like that, you know, even the original ones, like all these things that helped us uh, connect to one another more easily on one level, but disconnect on a whole another level. And also be able, so it gave people the ability to not have to have conversations because you could much easier. It's much easier to just uh, tell them they're wrong and then tell them to you know, call them a name or whatever because it's not like they can just punch you in the face for it. Where if you were having that conversation with somebody in person, there's a much greater chance of that happening. Um, so more people <laughs> could become have become emboldened to to bluster about their positions and their ideologies and and and, and, and you know virtue signal and proclaim them cloudly uh, proudly and yeah uh, you know and then who conversation nah i don't need that man <laughs> no i already know i'm right man why don't you go away like you can't close out the page in real life when you're having a conversation with somebody this is true Although a lot of these people don't actually have conversations with people in real life. I'm one of those people oh, no, largely. I'm a, I'm a hermit. N- <laughs> man, man, there is no social skills to be found with, man, I hate to say it, but a lot of people that are younger than me. Like a lot. Well, no, yeah. Like, yeah, man, that's, that's cool. I'll just be on Twitter here. I don't mind standing in line at the DMV. I haven't been to the DMV in a while, but I would probably be on Facebook at the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or maybe, that, maybe, maybe that was a bad analogy. <laughs> no, but yeah, no people. Well, that I mean, that that is something that gets. Although it's funny, I was listening to. I think it was one. I think it was a Sample Hour podcast, Drew Sample Show, that I had actually missed a bunch of because apparently it just stopped getting updated on Stitcher. And uh, I thought he had pod faded. I didn't hear from him for a while, and I was like, oh, I don't see Drew's show anymore. And then I found him on facebook one day i'm like oh you're still doing your show wait a minute i missed like 20 episodes so i'm like been playing playing catch up and they they were they were they were talking about something and now i went through that whole part and i totally forgot what they were talking about that was related to our conversation so 
<laughs> so bringing that up was kind of kind of uh, not not needed. <laughs> well, no, it's it's a segue into a much needed public service announcement. Um, Stitcher sucks, and you should drop it. Yes, yes, it, it does. I, yeah. I I finally did. That was that was actually the last straw for me. I had uh, yeah. I, I put up with a lot oh, of crap. Garbage. I put I put up with a lot of crap with Stitcher over the years. Even even getting like screwed over with a bunch of things multiple times, and I kept going back just because I'm so lazy and so much like of a quasi luddite that once I find something that works, I'm just like I don't want to change, man. No, <laughs> it 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 works most of the time, kind of, and that's that's good enough for me. But yeah, I, I finally dumped Stitcher for Podcast Addict. And I'm so much happier because now I can listen to podcasts at one and a half speed or better. And uh, I get so much more in. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I was hoping it was going to come back to me, but it, it, it won't now. But yeah, so anyway, I forgot why I was trying to say, why I was trying to bring that up. Well, well, I mean, I mean that that's okay. Maybe Stitcher's dev team is run by a bunch of people who are young, uh, intellectually lazy, very entitled, with no incentive to do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible <laughs> it is quite possible man well yeah no i mean it the uh, but the, getting back to the whole you know the it's ba it's basically comes down to i mean yeah so socially awkward and and i mean i guess in put it even simpler terms it's just like you know but even basic manners you know and I, I don't know i when i say stuff like that i feel like i'm coming off like a, some old fuddy-duddy conservative but it really is and it, it's it's part it's part of this larger this larger disconnect that we're talking about with people's inability to communicate with one another and try to come to understandings or at the very you know at, you know even if you again even if you don't agree at least be able to kind of understand the other person's position at least a little better than you have rather than just saying well i disagree with them so they they you know it, it's basically what it comes down to mm -hmm. is they basically say i disagree with them you know so vehemently about whatever position we're talking about that i can't possibly derive any value from them not that these same yeah. people would put that put that in those terms, but that's basically what they're saying is they're saying, I can't possibly find any, I, I receive any value from you. Therefore, I'm not going to, I have no reason to give, you know, I have no reason to offer you any value. So I can just write you off with a, with a, you know, long winded word salad of nothingness or yeah. a one or a one word flippant buzzword uh you know just a kill switch response and, and and hit the block button or whatever and not have anything to do with you uh you know whereas people would you know in person they would probably they would either not have that very conversation or the conversation would go differently but because of all these other problems we're talking about still probably wouldn't go as, as well as it could if people were willing to actually be more open to one another, especially those who have differing ideas. And, you know, you, you were starting to mention earlier about formulating like uh, kind of like a relationship with the person first before you get to these ideas. And even if it's you are the one who has to be open to say, hey, OK, I'll listen to your ideas. Oh, that's interesting, you know, and, and not. And, and the other thing you brought up, too, about that, you know, the, the like we said, the whole using but, you know, using and instead of but like all those little tricks and stuff to you know just you have to you have to open the door somehow and then once you are once the person is more relaxed with you then it's easier to have these conversations but you have to be willing to get there and just too many people and it, you know we were talking earlier about the the liberty community in general but it really is just it's everybody and you see it and it's i i you know that's why i refer to things as residual statism because i think it is i mean you said it kind of flippantly earlier but whose fault is it well i mean it's it's yeah. human human's fault ultimately but cur in the current incarnation it's what's well i mean how do you blame culture right <laughs> well yeah so it's it's the people who who refer to themselves as government which we would call like the state or something you know whatever like that's that's right. the issue because they you know the that that's the the culture has decided i guess that that's the way they want things to run uh but and then you know it's, it's so easy to become complacent for so many people because okay the structure's here we don't have to do much and well these people disagree with me i don't have to talk to them and i could just keep doing my yeah. thing and as long as you know as long as my guy gets in then uh, i'll be happier and then when he's when they don't i'll be madder and then I still don't have to have conversations with the people because, you know, why would I bother to do that? It can't, it, it can't possibly make anything better. Not like, I'm not like anything else I'm doing is making anything better, but that can't possibly do it either. So I'm not even going to try. Well, I mean, that's the way that's the way people look at it. And I, I mean, people in general, like like 
our culture, I guess you could say. That's the way they look at it. And that is the absolute opposite, <laughs> incorrect way to look at it if you're moving toward individual liberty, more personal autonomy, bettering yourself, uh, any of that. The best and most overwhelming compliment that I've received from anybody outside of my family, really ever, a mutual friend of ours told me a few months ago, he said, man, you have a way of disagreeing with someone without being disagreeable. <laughs> and I really dig it. That's yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm serious. I'm like, <gasps> the student has become the teacher. Nice. I made it. Like, like, like that's it. That's the trick. Like, you actually have to know how to. Like, hey, yeah, my name is Kyle. No, like three decades ago, when people used to shake hands and look each other in the eye. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's what I'm good at. Here, sit down. I'll buy you a beer. Yeah, if you, uh, you know, it's I, I think it, it definitely helps. The, well, that that especially it usually helps break down walls a lot quicker. <laughs> if you can actually, yeah, do I that. mean, it might it might be it might be cheating, but you know, we win. No, yeah, well, no, but it, but it's it's it, 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 <laughs> whatever whatever it is. I mean, how usually with me, I usually try to figure out people uh, are into smoking some herbal stuff, and I'm like, hey, let's go smoke a bowl. We'll go chill. Same thing. Yeah, right. Uh, but right. yeah, either way. Yeah. But no, it's 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 something that. You know, I'm I, I'm looking to do more of in the future. I, I haven't obviously been doing. I, I do any most of the conversations I have are either on my on the, my different podcast or radio shows or or the one way conversations that I have with people <laughs> when I do monologues. Yeah, you know, or bet- or between pe- people I'm already friendly with. You know, but that's why I'm all, I'm trying to branch out even further while I'm kind of stuck in this digital world because you know around here I'm still not exactly the biggest. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not ever not everybody's my biggest fan around here. Rather, uh, to this day, still. <laughs> so trying to have conversations, although I have been able to recently, I run into certain people that don't know anything about me and being able to have conversations with them has yeah. been nice. Uh, but once I once I relocate, you know, I would I want to get out and start doing this more because you know it's something that was always hard for me to begin with because I was very introverted for a very you know for most of my life and uh I probably would benefit from from reading this book which again if if you haven't if if you missed the beginning of the show somehow we are we anytime we say the book we're referring to the Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people and you know I I, yeah. I could probably I could probably benefit for, from that but other than that I mean we probably should get actually uh wrapping up soon uh, I'm looking at the clock only because uh uh, I, I know, I know. There's a part of this where we're going to cut out, and don't worry, folks, that'll end up in a Patreon episode somewhere. But that <laughs> little blooper in the middle is going to be good. But I think we've been going for a, over, a little over an hour, and uh, a I, little, a I, little over an hour. Yeah, as I said last week, I want to uh, ease people into longer conversations. But you and I can keep. Well, talking. I I did want to make the point. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'll let you make your point, but I did. I did just wanted to ask. Uh, you know, aside from having yeah. other people yeah. read the book, like what, like what, are, what, are, what are other ways you think? Uh, you know, besides you know, literally having saying, "Hey, let's have a beer." Like, what, what would you suggest for people to to do to try to you know, even if if whether they think more like us or not. Uh, you know, to actually be willing to go, you know, whether they whether they agree with us and then are, are afraid to go out and actually try to start these conversations, or they don't agree with us but are still not having these conversations. Like, what would you suggest? What do What do you think are ways to uh, try to break down walls and 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 why it's actually still worth it to continue to do so rather than just giving up because everybody's so stupid, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and just putting your fingers in your ears and going, "Everybody's dumb. I give up." <laughs> why is why yeah. is it worth it, Kyle? Why why shouldn't why shouldn't I retire to, retire to my farm and say screw everybody else, come for me to get your buffalo well, meat? Otherwise, get the hell off my property. I mean, <laughs> I, I will I will come for your bison for sure. Just think, like we always say, walk a mile in another man's shoes, right? Just think, like, okay, if I if if some were if someone were to say to me that. I'm wrong. I'll always be wrong. And this will never work. And your opinion has no value. Your principles are worthless. You're a moron because I don't see how anybody could possibly come to that conclusion. Like before you start preaching at someone, really think like, 
and this is going to sound so kindergarten, it really is, but really think like, how would that make me feel? How would all this, these negative truth claims really, would it, would it really want me to engage with this person? Would it put my defenses up? Are we going to get to the point like in this little exchange to where we're just picking teams and we're going to become, you know, Republican Democrat in a conversation about anything? And if the answer to that question is, you know what, I wouldn't want anybody, you know, preaching at me like that, like I'm getting ready to preach at this person. Maybe ask questions, be Socratic, get them saying yes a couple of times. This is a sales trick. When they say yes three or four times, say, oh, that's great. Um, how does it work? Then you get them to bragging. All right. They say yes a few times. They brag a little bit. And through that process, you yourself will start to understand what makes them think that may be contradictory to what to what you think or what you've already kind of built up in your mind is their position. And going from there, man, really, it's just having more information to understand a human being better. You're not understanding this libtard better. You're not understanding this cuckservative better. You're understanding a human being better. It could be your neighbor. It could be some guy that I meet 2,400 miles away from home at a truck stop. But still, you know, I can gain something of value out of those short interactions. And it's not always, hey, hey, Reed Rothbard, taxation, theft, have a nice day. That's not what it's about. <laughs> it's about connecting with people. And the more you connect with people in general, the more you're going to remember how to be a person. And you cannot improve your own situation. You cannot build your own education. You certainly cannot get any closer to liberty for yourself if you don't have the foundational understanding and you're 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 gonna I, I guess you're gonna sit at home be a hermit and get stuck in an echo chamber if you don't want to learn how people work you know what i mean yeah as much as i do love being a hermit uh, unfortunately i know i'm not i'm gonna have to stop doing that uh in in, in, <laughs> in order to be in order to have a successful business but again that's because i'm going to be going out there and trying to provide value for people so they find you know there you go they find value for me uh you find value you, you you know find value from me rather that they actually want to uh make make contact in the first place but yeah man i think that's uh it's funny that you brought up like the you know the essential the uh the run by rothbardings that type of attitude <laughs> you know just here read this oh yeah uh, that you know dave, that drive by horse shit yeah dave uh <laughs> hashtag dave, dave, uh, dave, dave painter as uh as much as he drives me nuts i do love the guy uh my co-host he uh <laughs> that was that was his attitude for a we very all long, love dave that, come on man that, that was that was his attitude for a very long time pretty much although I, I, th I think he's changed much he's still you know he'll try to have a conversation but eventually he still comes to that point i'll just read this you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is, it is the word and you'll just read it and you'll understand yeah you're right it's not i mean <laughs> it, it gets it gets what you know it may get somebody out of your hair for the moment but it's not really um you know and in the beginning there was the word and the word was with them <laughs> rothbard yeah uh, as much fun as those campaigns were back in the day yeah, uh, yeah it really didn't i mean the, to uh i guess cult like stuff like that for culture jamming purposes is great but uh you know if you just, you know, you're you're not doing you're you're not really doing yourself or your cause, I guess, any any favors if that's the attitude you you take with people all the time, and just kind of you know just be, again you're you know going back to what we've been talking about this whole time about being so rigid in your ideology yeah. and so convinced of your of your rightness in your ideology that you're not open to anything, and you know. Unfortunately, as, as fun as that may be, because again, I know from personal experience, uh, it doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't make it doesn't make anybody yeah. it doesn't make anybody any freer. So if that's if that's right, a, and, another, and another thing and another thing to keep in mind is in these environments, you know, we we talked about the printing press, we talked about social media, we talked about environments where you may be face to face having these conversations. Always remember. You know, you're in an environment. 
you can view an environment as a system. You know, ecosystem is a word that has a specific definition for a reason. Work that system. Remember, there's three ways to handle it. You can go, you can work through it, you can work in it, or you can work around it. And anybody who claims to be an agorist knows what the fuck I'm saying when I say you can work around it. There's three different categories. And like Facebook, if you work in it, you're going to get caught up in this dichotomy, I'm right, you're wrong, horseshit. If you work through it, you'll probably meet some cool people and get to promote your podcast. If you work around it, you know, you may get to set up some uh, some nice little meetups and have one-on-one conversation in a retail store parking lot on Long <laughs> Island somewhere. And I'm telling you, man, it does wonders for social capital once you figure out how to work these systems and get what will build value for you and the ones in your circle of influence. Here, here. Uh, perfect way to end the show. All right. Uh, so thank, uh, thank you very much, Kyle, for the conversation. This is, uh, this has been thank a you of, for your time, man. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, would you like to, uh, give some plugs before we get out of here? Feel free. Yeah. One and only one, uh, go check out the Liberty Nothing special. It's just a website landing little place. It's where I live on the internet where I put all my podcast episodes up. There is no regular schedule. Life does happen, and mine happens to be fairly chaotic and unpredictable. So whenever I can make something that I think is really good, I'll put it up. And right there on the homepage, you'll see the latest three or four episodes and every way that you can subscribe to the show. And unfortunately, Stitcher's still an option, man. <laughs> oh yeah you, you can still listen to our stuff on stitcher too but i don't advise it <laughs> <laughs> no pocket cast i love pocket cast man uh i got i got i got podcast addict and i'm pretty happy with it so far so and i'm gonna stick with this one yeah. for a while but uh yeah yeah a- anything with stitcher <laughs> Hell, even the one I was forced to use on my old Windows phone, I can't remember what it was. It must have been some Windows version of a podcatcher because it was the only option I had at the time because they didn't, you know, obviously didn't have the Google Play Store on a Windows phone. And, yeah. you know, what? even that was better than Stitcher. So that's the Oh, idea. man, you could you can play it. You could play it off the website and it would work better than Stitcher. As a matter of fact, I challenge your listeners to go to thelibertyforge.com slash 15 and try it out. I guarantee you that episode with Jeremy is going to flow much better over the browser than it does with Stitcher. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I, I don't doubt that. <laughs> 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 but uh, make sure make sure you have some for, some snacks for that one. I think that was a long one. Anyway, uh, so yeah, once again, uh, thank you, Kyle. This has been great. Uh, please, everybody, if you haven't already or you're not already subscribed to uh, Kyle's uh, podcast on any of the available options, then please consider going to do so. It's, it really is a great show. I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass because he's here and he's my friend, but I really do enjoy it. I've, <laughs> I've, I've told him it multiple times ever since he started doing it that uh you know ever since ever since he actually first contacted me way back when and said hey man you think you could help me set something up i wanted to oh yeah by the way <laughs> again something you may not know about kyle which may actually entice you even more to go check out his podcast this motherfucker does his podcast from his uh big rig that he drives around all over the place because he is a trucker Beginning as he said earlier end. and yep. uh yeah he he's his, his his mobile uh mobile command studio he actually does the podcast so that's cool as fucking shit man and uh he's had some really <laughs> great shows uh i know some of the people personally which is uh, always an extra uh, you know always an extra bonus but there it's oh, oh con my com- my conversation with him is probably the dumbest one out of all of them um because it's just my stupid story what happened to me but all the other ones are highly uh hi- highly educational entertaining you learn some shit uh, hey good, good stuff don't man. put yourself down man <laughs> I, I, I did a, i did an episode with a libertarian party candidate okay so you might have to be the runner up for that one. Oh, that's right. I was I almost <laughs> forgot about that one. Even yeah, but that was still a good that was still a good one. It was a good good banter back and forth. But anyway, so yes. I li- I like the guy. Yeah, and and it's not a bad case of of how to talk to people you disagree with. I mean, he, exactly. he's a dirty dirty voter and his feet stink. Exactly. But And uh, I and I love the guy. <laughs> so there you go. Which which brings us full circle to what we've been talking about all night. Perfect. 
That's what you got to do, Redemption. man. Redemption. Get out there. Get some. Yeah, exactly. Uh, go, go communicate with people, and uh, you know, preferably in person, because it's so much easier to break down the barriers. But anyway, so yeah, go ch- go check out ch- uh, Kyle's podcast, Liberty Forge, and this has been Abolitionist Abstractions. All of these shows can be found at solpodcast.org and or uh, all my stuff is now being transferred over to Steam It, uh, Steam It slash Abolitionist J. You can find it there through my through my page over there, but it's all going up on DTube and probably DSound at some point. They have now DSound coming out, which is going to rival S- SoundCloud, but it's all stuff that's decentralized on, on the Steam It blockchain, on the Steam blockchain. And... You don't have to worry about YouTube and all the other places, their stupid rules and regulations. You don't have to worry about DCM, DM, what is it, DCMA or DMCA? DCMA. You don't have to worry about DCMA takedowns. You don't have to worry about getting demonetized, which, by the way, oh, yeah, fuck Stitcher. Fuck YouTube, too, because we just because <laughs> we just got we just got a notification today that we're getting demonetized uh, middle of next month, like so many other people, because we don't have the allotted amount. We have the allotted amount of subscribers. You have to have over a thousand subscribers to qualify. We do have that. Unfortunately, you also have have to have something like four four. 4,000 view, viewable hours for the year. And apparently we, we and so many other people don't qualify for that. So we're all losing our monetization over at YouTube. So fuck YouTube. Get over to DTube. Uh, on the Steam, yeah, that's on a the good Steam thing blockchain. about DTube, man. Uh, yeah, they can't take your money away. Uh, so Yeah, kiss. it's decentralized. It's not digital sharecropping. Exactly. So kiss, kiss, kiss our ass, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, that, that might be a show title for you. But anyway, so yeah, all the stuff, uh, solpodcast.org. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you next time. Love, peace, and voluntary interactions for all. Y'all come back now. You hear Oh, 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 oh,